Hey, kitty girls, it's Sunday, June 16th, 2024, and welcome to Cubs Out Loud Drag Race Tea Time, Season 9, Episode 2, where we are covering Episodes 5 and 6 of the All-Star Season 9, uh, where we're going to talk about Property Queens and the National Drag Convention Roast. So, for those of you that don't know who we are, my name's Gary, with me is my ever-fabulous co-host. And you are muted, bitch. <laughs> Ah, I knew it. Shit. I, <laughs> I muted myself for the music, and then I was like, oh, I'll, I'm, I'll totally unmute myself. I got distracted. I'm tired. It was long drive. Hi, everybody. It's Damon. Welcome. <laughs> that was funny, because you were just like, I'm watching you, and I'm like, no sound. No sound, girl. <laughs> and surely, that just, total sidebar, surely a drag queen has done that, right? Like yeah. done a, done a number where like the where they think the music's going and they're doing the whole thing but it's like on mute, and then mm -hmm. like you know somebody like the music comes in out of nowhere or whatever and they're still on the like the moment yeah that would be yeah that would be good. I would love it that would be fun anyways mm -hmm. so yeah we're gonna uh, talk about the latest two episodes of All Star season nine um. Uh, for those of you that aren't uh, patrons, you missed the the pre-show. We discussed, we kind of touched on the fact that we were okay with these shows, these episodes. Yeah. They were, you know. Yeah. Mm hmm That was a choice. So, how about we get into it <laughs> and talk about these, hey, Damon? <laughs> just saying, you know, just saying. Racers, start your engines and may the best drag queen win. Oh, you know what? I didn't pay attention to the arm. I forgot to I forgot to pay attention to the arm of these past two episodes. I haven't. I, it's okay. I'm sure it's going just as low as it can be. She got bursitis or something. I'm something. Yeah, she got she got a bone spur in her shoulder. Well, someone as uh, someone joked in the in the I think in the rose, gravity girl. Gravity. Oh, 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 ah! <laughs> oh, ain't that the truth? Ain't that the truth? Yeah, they came for Mama this roast a little bit, and I was like I was like, okay. Okay. I mean, there was, there were some good ones, uh, specifically. I don't think we're going to talk much about the roast per se from what I see here, but I do appreciate, um, the deep, dark vagina joke because Leah Remini is still in there hiding from the Scientologist. I was like, pay mm. that motherfucking comedian double for that joke yes. because that yes. that was some funny shit yeah that, that was good and that's the that other was... thing got me kind of said something online all right so i'm just gonna say this like i have a I have a twitter account for just drag and this weekend while i was gone away to pride um i was bouncing around and i had a notification so i went over without thinking that i hadn't seen the episode mm -hmm. yet mm -hmm. and i it got spoiled who won and then I saw that God made a comment or a post and was kind of like, if you think we don't have writers, girl, like, get with it or something like that. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I was I, mean, I was like, they probably do have staff there to help punch things up, you know, and make it, you know, better than whatever the hell they wrote. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah. yeah. Usually his. Speaking of the rose, um, that's my thing. <laughs> Like I and I guess maybe this is a, a kudos to the writers and whoever you all hired, but the roast kind of cooked. Like I don't want to be. Um, they were all in a sense going for it. There was there was there was no limits. So there were no like it was a roast, and people were were very much like I'm roasting, and I was here for it. Um, I think surprisingly the lineup went really good. I think you had a good like build and slow down as it were. I think um, there were some um, great moments that impressed me. Mm -hmm. um, some jokes that I I would have laughed out loud except I was watching. So FYI, everybody, um, we were both out of town. I was in Cleveland, and unfortunately um, could not connect my. Chromecast to the hotel TV, so I had to watch it on my little laptop, mm -hmm. and it it would be it was going to be really hard for both me and Jim to watch it at the same time. Mm -hmm. So I watched it and with a laptop with some earphones in, 
and so that he couldn't hear anything and then he watched it later gotcha um but um so i couldn't really i was trying my best not to be like ah because he wouldn't know what i'm laughing at (laughs) but there were moments that i actually i was genuinely tickled Mm -hmm. um and there were moments that um i was a little perplexed but um there was um Bandy. I don't know what you I don't know what's going on. I don't know who wrote your jokes. Yeah, or maybe you did them yourself. But mm, girl, um there are some there are some kind of cringy moments there. Um mm-hmm. and I was genuinely impressed with Nina doing what I think was the best thing for her to do, which was to take the I'm a nice girl and go like be very like jokey with that and kind of take that rein with it. So, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I do. I, I guess you don't. Well, <laughs> looking at that face, Gary. Well, all right. So I want to, I want to talk about Nina specifically. Okay. I think she should have leaned in more in a very specific direction. She came out mm. dressed as the devil. Mm-hmm. But she didn't really play that up. Mm-hmm. And like. I've also heard rumor, which is not fair to her, because it is rumor, that Nina's pretty nasty in the non-public eye. Mm. But she never wants that to get out there, because that would mm. kind of tarnish her brand or whatever, that actually behind closed doors with other people in private, she can be pretty, like, you know, mm. sassy and snarky and, like, really cutthroat. And so this whole, like, oh, I could and I would know what to say and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, eh, okay, whatever. And then she came out on the devil thing, but then she never really kind of played it up. And I was like, Nina, you had the perfect opportunity. Like, you were wearing an outfit to be a character. So uh-huh. you could have come out and been like, like, I don't know what I'm doing here at this convention. Like, you know, which is something T- Plastic TR tried to do, which didn't yeah. Didn't work no um but she could have kind of played it up a bit like you know like uh, obviously i'm the nice one can't you see how oh my god what is, what's happening and then she could have changed her voice and mm-hmm. she could have been mm-hmm. like she's like you know screw the nice girl time to roast you know and like done uh-huh. this like really kind of twisted thing yeah. she didn't do any of that which is so weird because she's such a comedic like improv kind of queen so i was like Oh, that's odd. Like, it seems like mm-hmm. you restrained yourself. And I'm not saying that she had to, like, change a lot of what she did. I just felt like she could have taken it another take level. It another level. That's fair. But then again, uh, we got the edit we got, and maybe production yeah. held her back or something. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. It's always the case, and I hate to say it, but I feel like sometimes that's the way we need to go when there's a certain storyline that they're wanting to present. Um, like, looking, listening to what was going on mm-hmm. i genuinely thought it was going to be georgia's and plastique that won this challenge but mm-hmm. it wasn't that it wasn't that but again the the i i and there's a there's another part of me and i'm not i i, I feel like maybe it could be the case but maybe it isn't i don't know um and maybe just a little twist but I wonder were all of Rue's laughs really her? Oh, like as in some were canned? Like as an audio yeah. fill in when in uh-huh. fact she wasn't really laughing? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Because there are moments where, like normally when she's like, <laughs> like that, 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 her laugh, we know her laugh, that like uproarious laughter, we're usually seeing her on screen and we weren't seeing her on screen as much. But maybe that's just me. I don't know. Well, she it did get felt... the tissues out. Yes, 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 yes. Although but... that should have been the sponsor of the episode if you watched Untucked. Um, <laughs> just saying. Yeah, no, she, yeah, so it was a little odd. It's, it's becoming the, the, the thing that I'm, I'm always with an issue with these non-elimination seasons is like what is real right. and what is produced. Well, because... I agree because I think in the in the non elimination seasons it's more apparent mm-hmm. that the production is behind things as opposed to the elimination seasons where we may not talk as much about like production having a heavy hand but we we all know like productions like, yeah. Yeah, make, yeah made the decision in the reality show like as to what's going to happen as far as like 
who stays, who goes kind of stuff um, for the most part. So, yeah, I don't know. We'll we'll see where that plays out at. Um, I think that I think that's fair as far as a serve. I mean, I I agree that the roast went well uh, mm-hmm. to say that nobody like, you know, bombed and mm-hmm. like, you know, did terrible is a fair statement. Yeah. I, I would do, say that's a fair statement. I do think some queens didn't do very well. Yeah. But, you know. Yeah. If you were, like, going up and down, and, like, if this were an actual elimination season, we we could have seen queens that could have, that were tops and queens that were, would have been bottoms. Like, we would, if we were getting that kind of feedback, we would have right. seen that. Right. No, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. What about you, Gary? Um, I said, come, I'm giving a serve for come through mathematics. Like, oh boy, honey, this season has been the drag queens need to learn how to add numbers like season because there has been so much about the who won, what, when, why, and the like, you know, and who's got money for their charity and who doesn't. And like, if you do this thing, then you carry the one. And if you do that, then you like, you know. And it's just, it's killing me because this season has become that meme of that woman's face with all the, like, algebra yeah, or whatever over top yeah, of it. Because, uh-huh. like, they did that, you know, with, with poor Chanel. Like, she couldn't keep up with all of them talking about, like, well, if this happened or this happened and if this one. And then they gave this to this one and this one cut this one off. Like, Chanel was just like, I am so lost. And I was like, I don't know if she's really lost. Because bitch runs businesses. Like, she, she's uh-huh. a smart cookie. She knows what she's doing. Right. Maybe in that moment she couldn't follow the math because they weren't explaining it very well. Or maybe she needs a whiteboard or a chalkboard, and that's fine. <laughs> Some of us are very visual that way. Sure. But, yeah, like, so it's just amusing the shit out of me how they've been like, you know, well, this one's got three and this one's got two and blah, blah, blah. And then everybody's like, and then there's Chanel. Womp, womp. Right. Like, you know, that she doesn't have any. So... Yeah. Uh, I, I listened to another podcast who recaps the current drag race season and man, they were like, well, kind of looks like she's getting the treatment that they're just going to drag it out and not give her any badges probably till the very end. And I was like, mm-hmm. like yeah, I'll get I'll get to that later. Yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> but in terms of like just what's been happening, it is amusing me to know when that like mathematics is a thing. And then we get the mini challenge in the most recent episode where they have to. Uh, stare at two new pit crew members who do absolutely nothing for the episode. Right? Like, they're the poll workers. <laughs> okay, we get it. Double entendre. Ha ha. Very funny. They're in the banana hammocks. They're just standing there. And then all the queens have to, like, vote for each other or themselves. And we've seen this mini challenge before. It's fun. Yeah. Can be. Uh-huh. This one was not as fun as previous ones, in my opinion. But... Like, just last yeah. season they did it, the regular season, yeah. and that was very yeah. fun. And, and this one was kind of, yeah. oh, okay. And, and, I think, and, and we missed a bunch. If yeah. you paid attention, like, suddenly we get to a tie, and it's the last question. And I was like, how the fuck did Nina and George just end up with 11 points each? We didn't go through 11 jokes. So it was mm-hmm. obvious they cut a bunch of the mini challenge out. Mm-hmm. And then, like, so we're there, and we're talking about how it's the end, and we give another shot of the pit crew, and we ask the question, and Georges gets the point, Nina doesn't, Georges wins, and then we thank the poll workers for coming out. Yeah, the only reason that the poll workers were there was because the teammate or whatever, whoever whoever was on their fucking underwear were the sponsors of the um, the donation to the charity. Oh, I didn't catch that at all. Yeah. Trust me, it took two. Re- it took two reading. It took two um, viewings to see it because I got to watch it twice this time because Jim got to watch it. So, <laughs> or kind of listen. I was listening more than watching, but yeah, it, it made yeah. no sense to me at all. Like why they were even out there, what they were doing. Like I was like, oh, this will be an interesting version of the game because apparently the pit crew has to interact with them and do something. No, yeah. they didn't do anything. No. They just stood there and kind of looked beautiful. And I was like, if they were even standing there, like fuck, like. I mean, and they like, and they were two faces we're not familiar with, and they don't get introduced by name. Nothing. I was like, "Wow, this is this is horrible." Like, I don't know what the story is. Although I will say, the one with the shorter hair, uh-huh. she 
she like goes to walk away to go back through the double door or whatever and does this little bye like this little wave like you know finger thing or whatever to the queens and i was like who do you know in that lineup i was like who do you know in that lineup like uh oh because i'm like that that is not a like Hi, it was nice to meet you. That was a uh, see you later, girl. Like that was that was. I was like, okay, are you a go go boy? Are you a backup dancer? Like you seem to recognize a face or two. I don't know what the story was, like, and and I don't I don't I didn't bother. I didn't have the time obviously to look it up, but I was I was amused by that because I caught that and I was like, oh hi hi honey, how are you? Anyways, <laughs> it was just like this thing. So, anyways. Yeah, the, the mathematics. Uh, like, and then, like I said, we had the mini challenge today where it was all about math, and you had to like try to game to get the points to win. Yeah. And then in the end, you know, it's a tie, and we get to the last question, and then Georgia ends up winning. And then they asked Nina later why she voted the way she did, and she was like, "Well, because I was trying to guess the way everybody else would," which is so funny to me because I'm like, "See, see, like." math like she's actually trying to play the damn game and win like she wanted to win the benefactors badge like you know she wanted to win uh -huh. the you know money for her charity anyways right all right let's move on to swerves oh. uh oh oh okay interesting yeah. uh what are you um, giving us swerve for damon i said really roxy and the real the thing i'm having an issue with and it's just I, I don't know. Again, I don't know if this is gameplay or if this is genuine or whatever. But the whole drama with her 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 winning the Property Queens episode, her winning the lip sync, and then having to do the elimination, the hiding of the face, the turning her back, and doing the sniffers, like you know, being being like random and what have you it just felt off okay and i want to know what your thoughts on on got mix statement were that at the beginning of this episode because got oh, called it out and i was like oh, yeah and oh and that's sort of that's happening <laughs> and i do feel you know and i don't want to be that person and again, like I said, if it was genuine, if, if he literally wasn't trying to get to know where everyone is, I don't want to be that person, but there's like seven other queens besides you. You've got to know where th their voices are coming from, where the people are, what have you. I, I, I can understand emotions maybe taking away from your ability to perceive, but girl, um, and of all the queens to land on. Of all mm -hmm. the queens to land on. Mm -hmm. Like, come on. Come on. Mm -hmm. It just, again, it, again, and like I said, it, it, it could be real. This could all be like Roxy was just like having an emotional moment and she didn't want to eliminate any or like snip anyone and blah, 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 whatever, whatever. Like, it could have been all of that shit. Like, it could have been. But I also feel that, I don't want to call it strategy, but I'm also, to add on to it, because we've gotten a preview of what's happening in the next episode. And again, I don't know if this is genuine or not, because it was the one little clip where we get her saying something about, like, I know what game you're playing, and it seems like she's talking to Angeria. And I want to be like, bitch, you, you even said in this episode that you having three badges put a target on you. And then you're going to be mad that someone who you have snipped twice before is suddenly snipping you? Like, mm -hmm. girl, please, like, stop that. Like, you know better. Like, you of all people know how the game is played. You've literally been a pawn in some games twice now, so shut the fuck up about all of this stuff. You know what the fuck you're doing. Like, <laughs> it just, it just, uh, it, either you're playing the game or you're not. Mm. And that's kind of where I'm feeling, is like, you seem to be someone who wants to stir the pot and wants to put things out there and wants to say certain things and all of this, you know, kind of stuff, then you want to play 
this victimist side to it where, uh, oh, I don't want to eliminate anyone. We're all kind of kiki and friends and whatever. But, and then you flip right back to, oh, it's a game, and I know what game you're playing. Like, make up your mind, girl. Like, that's that's my main thing. Like, mm. what do you want to do? Right. Because you were in the lead, and you're right. now tied. You're still in the lead. Right. So it makes sense. And it, oh, it makes sense that Angeria picked you. Right. Not just for the emotional, like, you've done me twice, whatever. She couldn't pick Plastique. The only other person that has three badges mm-hmm. at this stage in the game is you and Plastique. Right. And Plastique won beside her, so she couldn't pick her. We know that. That's right. always been, like, the thing. So, obviously, it's you, girl. <laughs> like, right. Yeah, so this other podcast that I listened to, I find it very intriguing that they broke down this whole situation. And they said it was a a play in three acts. And they stopped and started the whole thing from the beginning to the end of the snip. And they talked about how the, the accidental picking of Angeria was not an accident. But production didn't step in and tell Roxy that she had to stick with the choice. Mm-hmm. Because then she's like, no, 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 like, I, I can't do the Nigeria. Like, I'm going to, I'm going to pick somebody else or whatever. Right. And there's like a cut on camera and there's a thing. And then Rue says, not your final answer. Like, like this questioning yeah. question. And the hosts were saying, Rue had every right to stick it to Roxy and be like, nope, you've made your decision. That's it. And like cause more drama or whatever. And their theory was Roxy expected that. But when production didn't stick with her first selection and allowed her to repick, that's when she started melting down because she didn't know what to do because she hadn't thought that out. Like she hadn't right. gamed that she would actually, actually have to pick somebody else. And like she may have thought that this would make good television to block Nigeria again. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if that's real or not, but I found it very intriguing as a theory that they proposed that like she knew what she was doing to a certain point and then it got out of hand. And then, you know, they, they agreed they couldn't quite tell if these were, you know, if this was all legitimate feelings and emotions and blah, 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 or not. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, Anyways, <laughs> I'm sure we're going to talk about this more later. <laughs> oh, yeah. So there's Gary. That. Oh, oh, Lord. Yeah, we can talk about this. All right. So these are swerves, right? These are things that are misses. Um, I wrote Georgia's Bronus. Just no. Just no. Just no. I get that Rue told you to do it. I get that the panel of judges told you this would be funny. And I get that you went with production on this and you ran with it. It wasn't that funny. Like, I realized people were laughing because Rue was laughing. And there's a yeah. part of me that's like, all right, I get it. Like, like, has anybody checked her catheter? Like, is it infected? Like, you know, is she having a moment here? Like, because I feel like everybody was kind of like, oh, my God, like, Rue really thinks it's funny. And you know how it is, like, when you hear somebody laugh, like, you kind of laugh. Like, as a human uh-huh. species, it's hard to not laugh when other people are laughing unless you're in a really bad mood. And so I'm just like, wow, OK, like this. Like, the thing is, Georgia's can't be butch. And what I mean by that is she can't be butch to be funny as a femme. Like, she can't yeah. sell the broness to make the femme funny. Right. She had some good jokes, but, like, the yeah. jokes aren't it. It's it's about the the delivery or whatever. Like, I needed more of, like, a, of a duality of personality, and it just kind of wasn't yeah. happening. So, like... So, and 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 that's kind of what I, I feel was the, the crux, like, the issue that mm-hmm. I think I had with it. Don't get me wrong. Were there funny jokes? Yes. Yes, there are funny jokes. There are some good moments. And but the character was 
unconvincing. Mm -hmm. Like, we've seen characters do roasts before. And it can hit or miss, you know, depending on what's going on. But this particular instance, it felt like who, like, like if, again, it felt like George Right. With the hat on and less makeup, wearing jeans. Yeah, it, it, it didn't come across as, like, something different. Yeah, like and... thuggy and straight and whatever. Like, it, it didn't feel that way. And again, my other, like, if he had gone to the other extreme, like, yeah, wear all that stuff and gone out there and been, like, super uber, like, mega femi gay, like, gone that, like, taking it to the extreme, mm -hmm. I think then it would have made sense. Like, then it maybe it would have been more funny. Right. But there was no um, way to parallel it. It just felt like George. Yeah, like, it just, it didn't work for me. And I was like, yeah. okay, like, I'm glad you did yeah. it. You did the thing. Good on you, girl, because yeah. yeah. you made the judges happy because, like, you finally did the thing that they wanted you to do. And yeah. if this is a regular that... season, this would probably be the episode where your ass goes home. Just saying. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I hate what you Wait, do with your makeup. Could you please do something different? Thank you for doing something different. Bye. I know. Just saying. Just saying. Yeah. Maybe they're trying the, to turn the... a new leaf. I don't know. <laughs> but the, 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 like, oh, this could be a character, and oh, you should like take this on the road. I'm like, mm, I don't know. I don't think this is. I wouldn't pay for it. George's. Well, it, it's not. It, it's not what I would go to see George's to see. Like, like no, no offense. Like, I, I just saw her in uh, RuPaul's Drag Race Live, like mm -hmm. back in January. I love George's when she's performing. I love when she is dancing. I love the, the, the charisma that eludes from her while she is like performing to a song and dancing her ass off mm -hmm. that's what i would go drop coin to go see georgia says hector the the whatever she called it like i'm good right i'm good unless it's part of an act like you did it like first act of you performing and then you drop this in the middle as sort of like a cool down shit and then you went back like may maybe right but then that, to me this needs to be a video segment like and this plays on the projection mm -hmm. screen while you're busy doing a costume change or something right like, right yeah yeah yeah. no i i don't know it just it didn't work for me it was a swerve i was like mm -hmm. nope and please don't do yeah. it again and she was <laughs> like i was well. so brave because i went out there and i was dressed as myself and i was like bye <laughs> bye <laughs> just bye <laughs> i know why you did it i just don't see the point point yeah anymore. We know why she did it. Everybody knows why she fucking did it. Well, yeah, she's... Because they told her. Well... They literally, the episode before, told her to do it. Right. I mean, the only other, the only thing she hasn't done that we know of is, like, you know, like, Mama's Taint. Anyways. But she was born to do drag. That's what I mean. I'm just going to call it out. I think Rue wants to fuck her. That's, that's what I think it's all about. That's what I think it's really all about. Anyways... <laughs> what <laughs> I'm just you know just it's calling it out it's calling it out mm -hmm. okay 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 let's move on uh <laughs> nerves what we give a nerve for? <laughs> I'm so intrigued by this David someone got to talk about it so bring it up bring somebody's it up. got to talk about it and, and and I have to talk about it Teletubby, like what? What? Where? Where in left field? Like, given a random sports metaphor, like far left field, did this fucking thing come from? It 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 made zero sense. Mm -hmm. Like zero sense. Mm -hmm. Like why? 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 Mm -hmm. This has never been mentioned. Yes, we everyone. If if you remember the Teletubbies back in the day, and there was whole the whole Tiki Wiki had a purse, and Tiki Wiki's gay, and yada yada yada. That was like the whole big thing back in the day. But that was back in the day. Mm -hmm. 
this is now 2023, 24 when they did 23 when they did this. Right. So, um, why, why Teletubbies? Why? Why have them come in for a mini challenge? Why have the mini challenge be a Soul Train dance line when you've got folk in costume, like mascot costumes, that can't really do much um, movement in those costumes? Um, like there was, who was it? I forget what was it. Was it Vanji or some somebody who like like put their like legs up on one of the one of the Teletubbies? I can't remember who it was. It's such a blur. I think I'm blacked out because of it all. <laughs> but um, but it was just I saw this moment. And I was like, they they can't see your ass. Like you almost kicked them in the face. Like <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> it just it it doesn't. It didn't make sense. So I guess my own the reason I'm giving this nerve is like it took a lot of nerve for whoever smoked the joint in production to come up with this idea. And then it took the nerve of whoever whoever is in charge of Teletubby to be like, This sounds like a great idea. So what I'm hearing from you is What the fuck are you doing here? <laughs> I mean, exactly. Exactly. What the fuck are they doing here? <laughs> like, so someone the the rumor, it. the T was explained by Willem on Race Chaser. Willem apparently has a good on good authority that Paramount or Netflix. I thought she said Netflix paid a million dollars for that basically ad spot type thing to happen because apparently the Teletubbies are coming back and there's going to be a show and they wanted to like use this as a way to like begin the whatever of their like show that's going to be coming and that is the only logic that I have heard that I, I, I'm going to sign up and believe in because I agree with everything you said. I was like, this is the most random ass like motherfuckery <laughs> you have ever seen on the show. They are just there out of the blue. And those poor queens as contestants are probably all like, what the fuck? Although it is funny because in classic fashion, Nina is like peeing herself with excitement right? over this. But you expect that from her because... It's the Teletubbies, and she's the and she's the kids' drag queen. You know, she's the one that like is you know writing books and raising money for Dolly's like you right. know children's library and like doing all this stuff. Like you know, so it makes perfect sense that she's so excited yeah. about something that's meant for kids is like you know a part of it. But yes, I totally agree with everything you said. But when Willem said that she had it on good authority, I believe that someone as an executive wanted this to be kind of a good opportunity and they were willing to pay that much money for that kind of publicity. And I was like, okay, no. but that being said, all what you just said, though, David is still fucking valid as hell because it's like, great. So you took money to get them on the show, but what you didn't do was make sense of it. Like it's still a mess. What, what was it? What was the point? What was the reason? I don't know. Right. You don't know. Willem didn't know. Other than the fact that, like, right, that like they it was the, they paid the, for it. Yeah, paid for it. That's the only reason. That's right. The like, only thing. Like they didn't turn it into something. Like they didn't make it as a part of the whole theme of the episode. They didn't, you know, make it about you know television and how that like you know has an effect on you know pop culture yeah. or like the importance of like your lasting impression into future generations or, I mean, like they did none of that. They put zero effort in. Like they literally just took the check and said, great, uh -huh. have them show up on this day. We're going to do some something. We don't know yet. What? Oh, uh, <laughs> what can we do with them? I don't know. Uh, they're pear shaped. They're kind of weird. Their fo their faces are frozen. Their, their little TV screen stomachs don't work. Uh, I don't know. Dance. Sure. Dance. Like, you know, 
And the thing is, like, you can't you can't do better than the season where Jasmine Masters pulled a loaf of bread (laughs) out of her bag, and Rue says, "Where the hell did you get a loaf of bread?" Loaf of bread. (laughs) Right? Like, like that's like, and I'm like, it's peaked. It's peaked. Don't do it anymore. It's done. You know, like that was that was the high of that of that challenge. Don't just never go back. But nope, we brought the Teletubbies in. So there's that. Yeah. Okay, you're gonna have to explain yours. Um Okay, so the quote unquote celebrity guest judge from this most recent episode. Uh-huh. I have never heard of this woman in my life. Uh-huh. I don't know if I ever will again. I will say uh-huh. the following. She looks goddamn good for eighty eight. Like right? cryogenically frozen, snatch pulled in every which way you can ever imagine. That mm-hmm. being said, I am not here for the gay, the conservative, log cabin Republican bullshit that dressed her in a Betsy Ross, like, spangly caftan to come out on stage. And then, and then Roxy? Roxy, I love you. But fuck you, Roxy. Like, what is this like? Oh, I love a reveal. And I was like, that was not a reveal. Like, that was just another flag under already a problematic flag. What is this representing? The 13 colonies? Why are we trying to represent the past history? We already have a problem with that in this nation. (laughs) So I wrote, old white woman, KKK caftan. I was like, what we don't need is an old white woman. What we don't need is like repression. What we don't need is to go backwards in time. Why the hell are you reminding of us of the founding of this country when black people were slaves? Jesus. I was like, this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. I was so it irritated with it. Weird. And 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 I I own it it again, it felt weird and i of all the things to put her in and i want right and i want to say this i am i am having issue with the outfit i am not having an issue with her Mm -hmm. she is yes i guess hollywood celebrity royalty like she like is is the last the last of a generation i mean her voice if you just listen to her voice and when she talked absolutely Mm -hmm. when she was with the queens in in untucked like she was so wise and so like so great uh-huh. to be of that generation because uh-huh. i was like do any of these queens really know who the fuck she is i doubt it like i don't think anybody knows who she is rue know who she is i don't think well, even carson knew uh-huh. maybe she, michelle like but that's because michelle's always up rue's ass as her best friend so uh-huh. like you know she might they might have known but i was like i don't think anybody knows who the hell this is so i'm like at least we know who the fuck bob mackie is like but I was like, I don't know who this bitch is. And she seems nice. And she's and she does understand comedy and timing and stuff. And I just like wish we'd have yeah. known of her sooner or more relevantly. It just didn't make yeah. any sense. But she she at least did something during the show. But I will not forgive the outfit. I was like, absolutely not. Like it like just, of all the people to wear that, not an old white woman. It just was off. It felt very much like um, I don't even know what to call it. I was gonna. Uh, it felt very much like um, uh, Katya's like outfit from from um the finale of her season, mm-hmm. but it wasn't that. It felt no wrong. I am wrong. I am wrong. It felt like an outfit that Katya has worn on on uh. It's right. a big, like, great right, 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 right. thing. And that's what it felt like. And I was like, that's cute. That's for, nice. For, like, a minute. Like, yeah. And then, and then it just makes you wonder what the hell's going on. Like, yeah. I get that you covered up your entire body. Yeah. But, like, I don't know. I just, I was <laughs> like, why, why, why the 13 stars? Why not an actual American flag? Yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have cared if it was the actual fifty stars. I wouldn't have given yeah. a shit. But instead, it's just notably a specific flag from a very specific time in our history as a country. And I was like, we have so many problems right now, and the last thing I need is someone coming out there, possibly whistling, 
like whistle tone, like drawing attention to conservatives or some bullshit. That's the okay. way I took it. That's mm-hmm. why I'm so fired up. I'm like, no, absolutely not. Fire her stylist. Like, get that log cabin Republican bullshit closeted gay man out of her life. Like, I don't know what happened, but somebody let that slip through. And I'm like, no, absolutely not. Nerve. Absolutely like, not. Crazy. Crazy, crazy, mm-hmm. crazy. And then, mm-hmm. like, and I guess, like, the theme of the runway was somehow tied to her. Because there was this reference about Atomic Blonde. And then, like, and I guess it had to do with, like, I guess that's what she was known for. Like, I don't know. Like, I'm like, I don't know her enough to make the connection to understand the thing. But, okay. I guess. Lord have mercy. I, have I don't know. Like, I don't I don't know. I'm but trying it, to get to that. Personality-wise, she was better than past judges. You know, she wasn't, she wasn't knocking it out of the park, but she wasn't awful. So. Correct. It's so weird because I'm like, you know, this is a case of who? <laughs> but I wasn't like, no, absolutely not. Like, it was so strange. Yeah. So strange to me. So, yeah, no, yeah. no, no, and no, no. <laughs> and she reminded me a lot of that one journalist on TV on 20, is it 2020? Are you talking about Barbara Walters? No, Leslie, huh. the other old white woman. Oh. Barbara's gone now. Um, yeah, yeah. I haven't watched twenty. You got, you gotta understand. I haven't watched twenty twenty in years. They put her, they put her in front of a of a TV or in front of a camera, and I was like, "Turn the fucking HD off. Will you be nice to this woman? She is old. She is wrinkled. Like her makeup doesn't look that great. It's such a disgrace that you're doing this to her. And then you put her on HD in front of everybody, and I was like, "It's Leslie something. I can't think of what it is, but that's who yeah. she kind of reminded me of. And I was like, "But at least this one has had work done." Like, there's no way she could not have had work done. Either that or she did the Dick Clark trick that she dips her face in fucking ice water every goddamn day. Because, like, her face was taut and smooth. Like, I was super impressed. And then in Untucked, she talks about how she's 88. And I was like, Jesus, you look so much better than both of our presidential candidates right now. Like, that is so sad. Anyways, I'm on a rant. I'm on a rant. You are. You are. Why don't we cool down for a minute? (laughs) All right. So it's time for snaps and eye rolls, um, a.k.a. the hits and misses or the highs and the lows. So speaking of drag roast convention bullshitness and that kind of stuff, Damon, (laughs) what are you giving snaps for? (laughs) How do you like that segue? Woo. That was wonderful. So fun. Um, I'm giving snaps for political discussion. And it actually happened in this most recent episode. It was actually mostly an untucked to me. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do often call these moments out because I think these are things that don't get talked about. And yes, we know usually when it's a political year, Ru's, RuPaul's Drag Race gets very political in a way. Mm-hmm. And I think that has been more than ever, even though it's technically a year later since they recorded. But um the conversations they have, the 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 one that I, that sticks out the most for me was the like if you were running, like what would your platform be and what would you want to get legalized and all of those things. And I have to get shouts and praises to Nina mm-hmm. for her genuine like, kind of like you, Gary, kind of almost going on a rant in a bit about like the rolling back of things and pointed pointing out the fact that they are coming they came after us they're coming after you next right like right. that and it's something i don't think gets talked about that often and again these queens have a platform this show is a platform as much as we don't want to like think of it that way that's what it is in a sense and um having this moment and having them talk about it in this sort of genuine, you know, moment felt very good to me. Um, so I know this is, this is, this is, this is like drag queen save the world season and charity and all that stuff. And I do hope that this becomes a consistent part of the 
next couple of episodes because it it's something that shouldn't be stopped, especially right. as we're going into a political season again. But yeah. No, I agree yeah. with you. I, I, I appreciated that they gave Nita the time on camera to talk and make that point of they've already started. Like, they've taken mm-hmm. away reproductive rights. Like, you know, they're, yeah. they're affecting these things, body autonomy. And she just kind of gave the list. And then in the confessional, she was making the point and came home with, if you think they're not coming for you, you're not paying attention. Yeah. And that's what it, and that's what it is. Like, that's the part that still boggles my mind a little bit is that there are people with vaginas in this nation that have still not figured out that they are on the chopping block and that mm-hmm. like and they're coming for more like it's it affects the work that I do there's quite yeah. a high possibility that the next administration is going to come for contraception mm. so yeah. like we already it, just had the court case go to the supreme court and the supreme court punted it on a legal issue didn't discuss the actual heart of the matter, just said, you don't have standing, boop, and, and like, sent it mm-hmm. away. And so they didn't actually talk about the the medication, mefepristone, oh, wow. and the ability of whether or not it can be used for, like, you know, preventing, you know, uh, contracept or use this contraception, eh, not really contraception, like, to basically, you know, cause an abortion, um, to, mm-hmm. quote, unquote, end life, which is a whole debatable item. So it was just wild to me that, like, that just happened and that people don't seem to be understanding, like, you know, and so in the field of work that I do, like, condoms are a thing that we talk about all the time and that we are giving it out. And and our perspective is, like, it's meant for, like, reducing the spread of STIs and HIV. But we also know that it is used, you know, for the purposes of preventing pregnancy. And, like... If you think that's not going to be something that's going to become a hot topic issue, you're sadly mistaken. Like, and I think what's wild about it is Nina's point was trying to make was like, you we take a lot for granted, and we shouldn't. Mm-hmm. Like, they're just they're gonna do what they yeah. can to cultivate the life style, like dream vision of our nation, however they can, and you know they don't like what has been happening and so they're gonna you know modify it as best they can it's it's wild so um i hear you on that i hear you on that definitely yeah 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 what about you um i'm giving i'm giving snaps to our special guest bob the drag queen bob the drag queen does a cameo special shows up as the poet laureate or whatever for the yeah. for the drag convention, I was like, I thought it was going to be a video. Like, I honestly thought it was going to be a videotape piece. And I was like, oh, okay, fine, cool, whatever. And then the bitch comes out in full high whore drag and does this interesting parody of the poet laureate, the young black girl who mm-hmm. got roasted by conservatives and blah, blah, blah. Like, I thought that was wild. I thought that Bob did a good job of that role um it was short kind of sweet to the point uh there was a little like funny things to it and she got off the stage and my favorite part was that she was in untucked Mm -hmm. and the girls all come back there and they're all like looking for those house of love cocktails and mocktails and like paying no attention to what the hell's going on in the room and then i think it's plastic tiara or somebody clocks that bob is sitting there but to be fair bob is in a red suit in a red Uh hat on a pink couch, like in a pink room. So she doesn't exactly stand out visibly. You know, she's just kind of there. But I appreciated I'm that she important. was in Untucked. And then my favorite part of it was she stirs the pot and is asking pointed questions about the season. So how are things going? What is it like? Blah, blah, blah. Is there any drama? Like, are y'all getting along with each other? Is anyone fighting? Crickets. Yeah. Like, yeah. And I was like, whoa. I was like, awkward. Like, super fucking awkward. And Vanjie's like, I'm just going to sit here and. And Mm -hmm. like, she's not saying anything in confessional. She's just bopping her head around like a little bobblehead. She's just like like and i was like 
wow, that spoke the most about this whole thing that like the girls didn't want to say anything on camera. And I was like, that's that's spicy and yet frightening that like Bob comes in and Bob wants to kiki like they're all backstage at the bar or the club yeah. or on tour bus or whatever. And none of them are playing with her. Yeah. And I was like, oh, shit. Because they, they know the tea. Like this is. Again, we all know that there's a game being played, despite this whole be this being a whole charity season and all that shit. There's still a game being played. Right. Um, there's still a a a crown to win, a sizable you know amount of money to win. Yes, it's going to your charity, but still, there's still this like stake on the line. Right. And we're at this weird place, as I think Roxy said, that we're halfway through. Roxy or Nina, one of the two of them said. Uh, we're halfway through the season, so clearly we're at that point where the queens are now doing the math, as it were, and trying to figure out how to, you know, what to do to make things work. Right. Mm -hmm. And it was interesting because Bob had a certain perspective about everybody's skills and abilities and then was being surprised left, right, center by the things the queens were saying. Like, yeah, Bob was trying to give flowers to Chanel and Chanel's like, no, and she wasn't <laughs> shooting Bob down, but she was trying to correct the record and be like, yeah, actually, no, girl, I'm not killing this season. Like, yeah. And I was like, oh, like, and it got and I think for Bob, it was like, what the fuck is going on around here? Like, this is <laughs> awkward as hell, because like everything I was thinking was the thing is not the thing. So then that made me wonder, like. So did production prod Bob with questions? Like, did they give her stuff to talk about or to bring up or, you know, I don't know. Like, because Bob knows good television. Like, Bob understands, like, how to sure, stir the pop. Sure. Bob understands all of that. So that's where I was like, mm, I'm not really sure what the story is. But I will say, I want to, like, definitely give snaps and recognition that Bob the Drag Queen came back um, and was on the show in two different capacities. And I thought it was good. Like, and, you know, I'm always happy to see, you know. Bob, yeah. come back to the franchise yeah um that being said uh ooh, eye rolls damon <laughs> well speaking of chanel um poor chanel um i don't know what's going on i don't know if this is production if or if this is just a lack of current understanding of things because she's been out of the game for a while, mm -hmm. but she's not doing well. And of the queens I thought would be killing it, like kind of like Bob was saying, like she's not. And I don't know, again, I don't know if this is a production, a heavy hand production thing, or if this is a, a, um, again, not with it, you know, as it were, but there, there feels it. Shit, it feels like they're intention. It feels intentional. Mm. It feels intentional. Chanel has always been old school drag. I mean, maybe not when she like showed up in that first episode a decade or so ago, but it feels very um, off. Like she feels very like off. Mm -hmm. She's old school drag. She's very big and all the stuff. And and I think one of the queens made a joke about, you know, she's not subtle. And I agree with that. But that to me has often been what drag is. It's not about subtlety. Um, and is is she paying the price for that? In at this stage of the game, the only queen that has not gotten a single badge maybe i mean i was looking at the numbers she's not the only i mean queens have there have been queens that have won badges but there are queens that have not won anything for their charity shit either so mm -hmm. and i think that's also something to keep in mind as well um but it does feel weird to me of all the queens of all the people that could have been essentially hyped up about 
bringing back and doing this again, they're sort of shortchanging her a lot. So I don't know. Yeah, it, it does feel strange to be halfway through the season and she doesn't have a single badge. Yeah. Maybe that'll change in the next episode. Yeah. Or two. Uh, but it, yeah. it, 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 it has kind of become abundantly clear that she's not going to win. Mm-hmm. Because now mm-hmm. now the odds are, speaking of the math, the odds are against her. Yeah. Because in order for her to win, she'd have to win, like, the next, the, the rest of the season straight. Two or three, yeah. At least three, if not more. Um, right. Episodes. Yeah. So, yeah, there's, there's something... Yeah, I agree. There's something not quite coming together about yeah. that. I don't know. And some it, it feels off. like I said it feels off. Right. Shenanigans, I say. <laughs> I think that's fair. Oh, oh, Gary. I think you, we talked about this a bit. We did. Um I just said cry me a thimble, Roxy. I like Roxy. I really do. I think she's an incredibly talented queen. But this latest stuff that has happened, I'm just not I'm just not here for it. I think the whole like snipping drama was exactly that. I don't mm-hmm. understand it. I think there's more that's not being explained or talked about. I think Roxy's very perceptive. She understands television. Um mm-hmm. Yeah, like I don't know. Yeah. So I'm just like, yeah, eh, okay. It, it's it's something again. I feel like there's something else going on. Yeah, I feel like <sighs> did we did I, okay? I'll put it like this, and I'm gonna say this in the nicest way I know how. Is this meant to be Roxy's quote unquote redemption season? Mm. Like. We got, we, and, and if you remember all the way back in season five, there was a lot of hate for, for Miss Roxy after the way she treated Jinx and all of that stuff, yada, yada, yada. So then we go to the All Stars 2, and there was, I don't want to say hate. Well, actually, I will say there was probably hate um, for Roxy in a way because of the fact that she was essentially be carried you know, throughout the competition that's fine. Like, we, we, we all saw it. We can't, don't deny it. You all know. Um, so now is this sort of meant to be this, like, we need to see all of these other facets of her, this kind, kind queen, this, you know, still strategic, still in her game, still kind of that, but also this other softer, side of her maybe we need to see that and her tears are sort of a way to show that maybe i don't know yeah i'm not i'm not sure i can't piece together quite what the whole story is it's also this is gonna be a spicy take it also doesn't help for roxy's confessionals Like, her, (laughs) how has it been described by several people now in different ways? Her, Tama Finland, Butch, Ken doll, Bleach, Bottle, like, Blonding, Andrew Dice Clay, like, Cosplay. (laughs) Like, like, the shit I've heard about that look, and I'm just like, Roxy, you're doing yourself no favors. You're just not. And I think that complicates people's take on her because, like, you can't take that seriously. So it, I think it draws everything into question. I don't know. Like, right. So, right. yeah, I think that's – so anyways, I was just like, eh, okay. Like, and she's yeah. allowed to have her feelings. Like, honestly, there's a part of me that's like, girl, are you, are you on hormones? Ooh. Like, what's the story here? Like, because you're all over the place. You're up, then you're down. You're up, then you're down. And I'm like, what's going on? Just saying. Mm. I'm not trying to make accusations. I'm just like, this isn't just this isn't driving. Like, something's it, going on. Yeah, for sure. 
Definitely. So that being said, you have things you want to say? You can let us know. You can go visit our website. You can go to CubsOutLoud.com. You can actually uh, send us an email, CubsOutLoud at gmail.com. You can also give us a call. Leave a voicemail. We'd play it on air. We'd have a discussion about whatever you want to tell us. You can go to 361-CAWL-TALK. That's 361-265-8255. Leave a message. Uh, you can basically find us on most of the social media outlets as Cubs Out Loud, typically one word. You can also um, join our chat on uh, Telegram. It's tinyurl.com slash telegram hyphen c-o-l-d-r you can see when we're going to have our uh, traditional c-o-l shows live on youtube uh, on our tinyurl.com slash calendar hyphen c-o-l if you want to get uh, merch and support us there's several ways to do that you can go to zazzle.com slash cubs out loud <laughs> you can uh get some attire as damon is showing we have a cubs out loud drag race logo you can get it on shirts uh mugs you can get it on a purse you can get it like on a shower curtain you can get it on all sorts of things um in that case we also happen to have our drag pride uh colored base consensus my foreplay uh, shirt as well that uh, i happen to be wearing so there's different items you can get there you can also uh, become a patron you can go to patreon.com slash cubs out loud for a dollar more a month you can help support us and keep the lights on as we like to say and uh you get pull to get the full shows like the pre and post show as well as the main in that case you can also just give us a tip you can go to paypal.me slash cubs out loud you can make a one-time donation um, we'll gladly take that and put that to good use um and pretty much anywhere that you get your podcast you can find cubs out loud drag race specifically as its own podcast feed as an audio uh portion damon if people want to get in touch with you where would they go if you wish to get in touch with me you can find me at theater cub 79 that's t-a-t-a-t-r-e-c-u-b-7-9 on most very related sites or on Facebook, or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter, or Pup Umbra 79 on Blue Sky. Those are not safe for work. But it's safe for work stuff, you can find me as DMAGamer79 on TikTok and Twitter. If, Gary? If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gary73. I do have a Twitter account, as I alluded to maybe in the pre show, um, that is Gary73DRAG. Um, where I yeah. basically have like uh, I don't what is that um, not well I usually say sequestered um, filtered banished all of the <laughs> the, the drag queen <laughs> spoiler stuff to a specific account and blocked everything else out. Um, uh, a lot of stuff still can't get through. Yeah, some of that still does come through. Um, or I make the mistake of going and looking at that actual account without having seen the episode, and then you know that's on me. Um, but anyways, yeah, there's you can go there. So with that, mm -hmm. uh, we'll be back in a couple of weeks. We're going to uh, see what happens in the next couple episodes. We're halfway through the race. Uh, so you never know. We'll see what happens. So until then. Bye. Ciao. Ta-ta.